The case of People v. Stamp illustrates one of the consequences of the felony murder rule. Stamp committed armed robbery and left the victim unharmed in the victim's premises. The obese 60-year-old victim suffered a fatal heart attack soon thereafter. Stamp was convicted of murder in the first degree. The predicate felony, armed robbery, is categorized by California courts as inherently dangerous. In denying Stamp's appeal, the court wrote, As long as the homicide is the direct causal result, the felony murder rule applies whether or not the death was foreseeable or a natural or probable consequence of the robbery. In this respect, the robber takes his victim as he finds him. Normally, armed robbery is not only inherently dangerous, it is stress-inducing. We can imagine circumstances in which the danger and stress are modest, as in the 1969 comedy Take the Money and Run. The bank robber, Virgil Starkwell, played by Woody Allen, passes a note to the bank teller. It reads, I have a gub. Starkwell has to explain, G-U-N, I have a gun. The teller insists the note says gub, not gun. Suppose the argument escalates and, unlike what happens in the movie, the teller has a heart attack and dies. It seems that Starkwell would be convictable of murder under the authority of Stamp. A harsh outcome, but as Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. remarked in another connection, the law may throw on the actor the peril of consequences which, although not predicted by common experience, the legislator apprehends. We might expect the drafters of the model penal code to have discarded the felony murder rule. The felony murder rule is a departure from the principle that culpability must be shown as to each material element of a criminal offense. When we look and see, though, we find that the felony murder rule is not in the MPC rubbish bin, but freshened up and on display. Recall that under the model penal code, Criminal homicide constitutes murder when it is committed purposely or knowingly or recklessly under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life. The code adds that such recklessness and indifference are presumed if the actor is engaged in the commission of or an attempt to commit robbery, rape, or deviant sexual intercourse by force or threat, arson, burglary, kidnapping, or felonious escape. The MPC dispenses with the concept of inherently dangerous felony and narrows the applicability of the felony murder rule to prosecutions involving this short, specific list of predicate felonies. Robbery, rape, arson, burglary, kidnapping, escape. The intention is to exclude predicates that are not on the list. Picking pockets is not on the list. Theft is not. Bear in mind that robbery is traditionally defined as theft accomplished by force or threat of force. What does it mean to say that recklessness and indifference are presumed. The model penal code tells us that when there is evidence of the facts which give rise to the presumption, the issue of the existence of the presumed fact must be submitted to the jury unless the court is satisfied that the evidence as a whole clearly negatives the presumed fact. So Virgil Starkwell's murder case under the model penal code is meant to go to the jury unless the judge is satisfied that, on the evidence as a whole, recklessness or indifference are clearly negative. 
that is, no reasonable juror could find beyond a reasonable doubt that Starkville had been recklessly indifferent to the value of human life. It is important to understand that this presumption does not authorize the court to direct a verdict against the defendant. The court shall charge that while the presumed fact must on all the evidence be proved beyond a reasonable doubt, the law declares that the jury may regard the facts giving rise to the presumption as sufficient evidence of the presumed fact. That means that the jury must find beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant's conduct manifested reckless indifference to the value of human life. But the jury may count the predicate felony as enough to show that and call it a day. This is how the felony murder rule operates generally. For example, in Georgia, these instructions were recently approved by our state Supreme Court. If you find beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the homicide alleged at the time the defendant was engaged in the commission of the predicate felony, then you would be authorized to find the defendant guilty of murder, whether the homicide was intended or not. Note, authorized. It often happens that juries acquit even under a felony murder instruction. That's what happened in Cernay. 